Good afternoon. I am Judge Deborah Thomas, and I want to thank you for tuning in. I've got some fantastic guests here today, and I'm going to, to put my disclaimer out from the very beginning. Some of you are not aware uh, that I, when I was an attorney, a young attorney to boot, I worked for what was then known as SEMTA, Southeast Michigan Transportation Authority. And that's because I am a strong proponent, supporter of public transportation. I know it makes a difference in our ability to get to jobs and to have our independence, both independence as people who are members of the disability community. And as we are an aging society, uh, baby boomers still want their independence. Independence, it's a means of maintaining that independence. Well, my guests today are working with this um, educating uh, community about the transportation um, law or bill or millage. They're going to explain it more fully, but we're still trying to get regional public transportation. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Both of them you've met before, but they're in a different capacity today. So beginning on my left. Judge, it's always good to see you. And the fact is, I want to put a plug in for you because you're going to be our Supreme Court Justice. I got to put that plug in. And as well as you got a fundraiser coming up on July 12th at Ask Me 600. 530, 7.30, is that correct? You know more about it than anybody. You, well, no, and that's what they need to know about it. You are top of it. They, they need to know about it because I'm going to be there. Art Vardaman's going to be there. And everybody that's looking in should be there because we need you on that Supreme Court for the simple fact. You are, have been part of something. So you understand what's going on yes. with regional transportation. Yes, so yes. That's, that's just my plug. But I'm Roy <laughs> McAllister, Jr. As, as the judges have stated, I've been here with uh, WHPR, the infamous R.J. Watkins before, and I'm going to turn it over to my partner and let him introduce himself. My, my name is R. Vardaman. I've been a retired uh, bus driver for 32 years. I also was the former president of ATU. I've also been involved in uh, maintenance situations in terms of buying coaches, and I just about did everything for DDOT. And regional transit has been a part of my life for a long time in terms of wanting it. But Judge Thomas, I do agree with Mr. McAllister. It's long overdue for you to be sitting on the bench. Okay. And I, I want to also uh, let the people know that what Judge Thomas did was she had a meeting and asked me in helping people who just came out of jail trying to get their foot back in the door, mm -hmm. trying to get their foot on the ground. And there's so many things that a lot of people are not aware of that she enlightened everyone and everybody. And I want to personally thank you for that. Yes, ma'am. It's my mission. I try to help where I can, when I can, as often as I can. Mm -hmm. Which brings us back to public transportation. What's new? What's going on now? Well, Judge, what they're doing, the Rapid uh, Regional Transportation Authority, which is known as RTA to many, uh, they're trying to push regional transportation, which is well long overdue. What they're trying to do is bring it within the five counties, Macomb, Oakland, Washtenaw, and Wayne County. And what they're trying to do is push this uh, $1.2 mil million dollar millage uh, to be passed. Now, what they've been doing is throughout the month of June, they're going to have 13 meetings uh, to community meetings to educate the public on. Now, again, I am definitely for regional transportation. I think it's well long overdue. I truly believe not only should we have transportation from county to county, but from state to state and eventually country to country. I do believe that. But see, some, there are some of the things that the Regional Transportation Authority is doing, and I'm kind of wondering where this initiative is really going to go. So, you know, we're going to spend the next 25 minutes trying to educate the people. i got to compress it. Yeah. Myself and our environment have to compress it within this 30-minute uh, minute period. But there's so much information out there, Judge. And you know, again, i got to put this plug in for you because when this issue does come, we need somebody on that Supreme Court that understands and knows this stuff. So rapid transportation is, is trying to come through rail, through busing, where you can ride from from Detroit to Ann Arbor to the to the airport and different things and get to places where you need to be in a reasonable time and at a reasonable 
cause. Yes, ma'am. Now, when we start talking about uh, this effort, it, 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 from what I'm understanding, there's so many facets. There's always is when we're trying to make a change. Are we anticipating that this is going to be something that may appear on the ballot by November? Yes, it, it's going to appear on the ballot in November. But I think it's important that the RTA explain bit by bit, point by point, how this thing is going to be done. You've got to know how many coaches you're going to have, if you're going to run a rail system, how, how is that going to be done. Because a lot of people don't know in transportation there are three facets, operational, maintenance, and funding. And without those, it's just simply not going to fly. Point number two, the unions have to be involved. When I say that, the transportation unions, which include ATU, ASME, UAW, uh, and uh, TWU, okay, okay, which represents Ann Arbor Transit. And the other thing that we have to also understand, that there are three providers, Ann Arbor Transit, SMART, and DDOT. So they are collectively as a group. So that would mean, in my opinion, is that nobody should be making more than the other. It shall, should all be coming together like it should be. No one system makes more money than the other system. So all that has to be done. And then your upgrading and maintenance, that's going to be important too. Wow. Because when you start talking about, okay, the uh, DDOT, SMART, and the ATU, they're not all, even when we're just talking about bus drivers, because I know um, when I was with SIP, the, the drivers had one union and, yeah. and the mechanics were in another union. Mm -hmm. um, so, whoo, is it going to be one employer? Are we envisioning that there will be one employer for all of these individuals for all four counties? Well, Go what ahead. we're looking at, what's, what the Regional Transit Authority is looking at is bringing all these systems under one umbrella judge. So therefore, everything that's going to be as far as movement, um, as far as dollars, as far as uh, em employment, is coming under the Regional Transit Authority. And so we have uh, ATA, which is Ann Arbor, SMART, which is oh, actually Oakland County, and then we have DDDOT, which is Detroit. So all that's supposed to come under one umbrella. But the concern that our, myself and Mr. Vardaman has is that if they're coming under one umbrella, is everything going to be done equally? Because we know in the past that they have taken dollars from DDOT and given it to SMART. So is the objective is to do away with, with DDOT? And if so, do they absorb our DDOT drivers? So that's a concern there. And we want to make sure they're saying that 85% of the revenue or the, the, the ridership would go back to that county. Well, when you look at it, and Judge, I think even when you were there, most of the ridership comes from Wayne County. So if it's coming from Wayne County, then are we missing out on some, some revenue? Because what you're talking about is you're talking about a three to five million uh, revenue return to the economy. So what happens if, if uh, DDOT is, is, is done away with? And what happens just like they have the Gratiot Avenue, the Michigan Avenue, the Washington Avenue, the Woodward Avenue, regional rail, and then they also have the quick lane streetcar. So what happens, does, does, does Detroit be involved with, let's say, Woodward uh, Avenue, the regional rail, which is the, the people mover <laughs> and, and all that? So these are some of the issues that we have to talk about. I guess one of my concerns is we have been trying to get a regional transportation I'm going to say for over 30 years, mm -hmm. all right, because uh, my, my, my baby boy wasn't even born. When, when I was at SEMTA, yes, and we were trying to get regional transportation, and he's, he's over 30 at this mm -hmm. point. We can't get to jobs, all right? And, and all of the jobs are not in Wayne County. No, they're not. So even if, if you're talking about we're going to return revenue to Wayne County, okay, I'm a Wayne County resident. I'm a Wayne County judge, all right? So I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> but I need to get to the job. Exactly. Okay, that is in Oakland County, and I need to get to the to the education that I specifically want. That may be at Eastern Michigan. You know, I'm a, I'm a Western Michigan graduate, right. but That's just right. by way of example, <laughs> are we going to get bogged down? And I understand it should be fair in terms of of job opportunities. Mm -hmm.
because one of the great things about having DDOT is that if you live in the city of Detroit, you could go down to your Detroit government and put in a job, all right? Yes, and, and chances are pretty good you would get a job working for your city. Right. And I'm old enough to remember when Coleman Alexander Young took care of his own. Right. Um, it sounds like we're going to get bogged down again, and we're not going to end up with public transportation regionally. Well, I think, you know, I hope that doesn't happen, but I do know one of the things that you just mentioned, Judge, and one of the biggest problems is that the people who live in the city of Detroit who have job opportunities can't get the jobs because they have no transportation. I think a study was done, I think it was like uh, 45 to 50 percent of the people don't have cars, mm -hmm. so the buses are, are, are the option. And I think we, you know, uh, I'm in agreement with Mr. McAllister, we have to pin them down on certain issues. And we, you know, the people are entitled to answers, the unions are entitled to answers, the workers are entitled to the answers. Yeah, because I wouldn't want to be losing yeah. my job. Exactly. Yeah. You know, Judge, when, when we talk about jobs, this is the breakdown <coughs> of the Regional Transit Authority talking about they're going to replace jobs. In, um, in Oakland County, let's start with Washington County. Washington County, they said they're supposed to support 4,301 jobs. In uh, Macomb County, 14,077 jobs. But then in Wayne County, 22,669 jobs. And in Oakland County, 18,852 jobs. So, you know. What does that mean, though? Is that jobs that's going to open up that people can't apply for? Or is this saying this is going to make it easier for folks to get to that number of jobs? Ex excellent point. Excellent point. Because that has not been bought up. Because we know there's going to be uh, all types of, 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 of uh, merchants and things that's building up along these lines. So, are they saying that these people will be able to have access to these jobs? Or are they saying that they are going to have access to jobs that's going to be built as far as building the RT8 system and the rail system? That, has, that point has not been bought out. And then when we talk about one of the other things that you brought out to Judge was the fact that how we're going to distribute everything. And that's very important because we have to look at how do we, again, distribute all this. And, you know, when you say, is it going to work? Is it going to be successful? Well, you know, let me break it down to some of the things that, that I've talked to Mr. Vardaman, folks at, at ATU, and some other people. When you look at the, the different counties, uh, Wayne County, uh, Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle has already stated that they're involved, they're paying fully into the SIMTA system, but they're not getting the services. Now, why they're not getting the services, I'm pretty sure he would have that breakdown. But they're saying that. But now you're talking about a 1.2 millage additional to what they're paying. Before Mark Michael Ford, who is the director of Regional Transit Authority, left Ann Arbor, they had a millage. The mindset of Ann Arbor is different from the mindset down here in Wayne County. The uh, Oakland County is a good example. You have two communities. One is paying with their neighboring communities. One is paying a millage, and one is not paying a millage. So now if they both... The we, one's getting service and the other one isn't. That's right. That's right. And therefore, SIMTA is not stopping at that service that don't pay, but they're stopping at the other service. Well, you don't pay. You got to pay to play. There you go. There you go. But... If this mill is passed, now the, serve, the, the community that's receiving the service is going to be paying double, and the, the, the community that's not receiving is getting the service, but the, the other service goes, wait, wait a minute. Okay, let's stop right there. Mm -hmm. If the one community is currently paying for a service, yes, and they're getting a service, yes, if the millage passes, this is obviously a local ordinance, mm -hmm. so couldn't that community say, well, we're paying in on the big, pl the big plan now, so we're going to vote not to continue with the, the, the other millage? I mean, you don't have to keep them both on the books. It's a local, it's a decision. Yeah, but the fact is, is that what the what the RTA is doing is like this is going to be a millage on top of a millage. Well, if the first millage is there and the local folks voted for it, they can vote to stop it. Yeah, they can. They can. But then you got to put that vote in. So that's another vote. Then how long does that vote go or how long does that process go before that millage is already in place? And that's what these people are going to be looking at. All I want is 
regional transportation. I agree with you. That then. will allow folks to get from one place to another. Mm-hmm. Okay, and in, in a reasonable time period, at a reasonable cost, That's right. across county lines. That's right. All right, so they can go to jobs, they can go to school. We will reduce the pollution. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. I understand that, I, and I want it to be fair, and that's always the hard part. All right, because yeah. it's, I can remember when I was at SEMTA as an attorney, mm-hmm. and uh, Shoot, the bus drivers were making more money than I was. I said, well, okay, well, give me a bus. I, w- I want to drive a bus. You know, and they're looking at me like, I, they they did have women bus drivers. Yeah. You know, so yeah, shoot, I, I, I wanted to drive a bus. They wouldn't let me drive a bus. I stayed in that office. That's because you was on your way to be judged. Whatever. <laughs> at the time, I had bills to pay. I understand that. Okay. You know, Judge, the, the, the thing that Mr. McAllister brought out is very important, but let me bring out some other things that uh, that have concerned me. W- number one, with this, we should be talking about a regional transit police force. Okay. Okay, and you know, throughout the uh, the counties, that's number one. And also, I, I did find out Thursday that we can. Uh, I'm concerned about an evacuation plan. And by that, I mean if something happens, we have enough buses to get people out quickly and fast in, in case of a tragedy. We are near the international borders. Yes, we Okay, are. so we, we need to look at that, too. And I understand that there are federal dollars there. So the RTA had already said they would work something out with FTA, which is the Federal Transit Administration, to buy some extra buses just in terms of for the evacuation plan. We need to think like we're in the 21st century. We know some things exist, and we also have to be concerned about people's safety and their lives. Who's on this board? I mean, are, are all counties represented? Well, what it, what it is, each county exec has, uh, appoints two members to the board. Now, the exception is Detroit Mayor Duggan also has uh, appointed a, a, a person to the board. So technically, Wayne County has three people on the board, but the county exec has two and the mayor has one. So that's who's on the board. How often are they meeting? They meet uh, every every three months, I believe it is, Mr. Fowler? Either every three months or every month. I, their, the meetings are probably going to be stepping up uh, even more so right. with all this going on. Mm-hmm. So uh, in terms of what they meet, how they meet, it's probably going to change. But it's important that it, for people who can make those regional board meetings to come down and voice your opinion and let them know how you feel. You want this, but we want it done right. Yeah, well, that's always true. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, and uh, like I said from the beginning, I am an advocate for public transportation. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 I'm, <laughs> and I've waited 30 years. Some folks have been waiting longer. Mm-hmm. I, I, are we rushing? At, can we answer all of these questions before it goes on November's ballot? I mean, you, where are we where are we standing with all of this? I, you know, Judge, when we say are we rushing, as you stated, it's, it's 30 plus years well overdue. Yes. But the fact is, is that Detroit, and I remember, Detroit used to have bus lines going to Flint, Oakland County, out to the airport. And that changed, and that changed because we had egos, counties, and politics getting involved. And so it's a disservice to the people. The fact is is that there is a a group that I'm also involved with called the State Fair Development Coalition. And Judge, you know, with these meetings, they put on an excellent plan. This this plan here, they put an X, I mean, talking about crossing the T's and dotting the I's, they did everything, and they presented it to uh, Mr. Ford, he looked at it, he said it was a great plan because he came from Ann Arbor. But since then, he has not met with them to implement some of these ideas that they're talking about. And they're talking about the state fairgrounds. The state fairgrounds, as you know, know is a turnaround point, yes. which is also uh, just a, th- a stone away from Oakland County, across eight miles. True. And they're talking about moving the turnaround point from there down to state fair and seven mile so you're talking about a mile down plus they as this plan here talks about the development of the state fairgrounds but you have to also look at there's some other investors in that 
state fairgrounds that really don't want this type. So again, we have to look well, at. I don't know why not. If you're bringing people to where the, the stores and exactly. the markets are, y'all exactly. to be glad folks getting so close to exactly. the store. Exactly. Are the people if, who have presented this plan? If we have three representatives uh, for Wayne County. Uh, have they presented these plans to those three representatives? What they did was they presented it to Michael Ford. Well, then maybe they need to go talk to their representatives. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. All right. That's I right. mean, if you got three, I'll be able to tie one of them down long enough to, to discuss mm -hmm. the, the plan. I mean, because they're on the board. That's right. And That's they right. represent, and, and maybe even in the Oakland County one, because this is on 8 Mile. Yes, ma'am. So maybe they can get, you know, the two representatives from Oakland That's County. Right. That's right. If, if you're trying to sell an idea, don't just stop with one person. That's right. That's right. But I think what they did was they wanted to grab him in the initial, and he thought the plan was great. But, but then, they need to grab some more folks. But, you know, what the, what the problem is, what I think, Judge, is that, and I'm just saying, it's, it seems like folks look at this and they've already had a process in. And again, we want the community, when we look at the commercials, when the RTA are putting on commercials, what do we see? We see black folks trying to get to the jobs. Yes, We're seeing right. disabled people trying to get yes. to the hospital. But what we should be seeing is also business people catching these rails, these trains, getting to from one location to another. We should be seeing doctors going from one location to another. Yeah, we should be that. seeing teachers. <laughs> but, say, but I'm saying, if this I mean, but we've seen employers talk about the fact that they um, cannot hire people mm -hmm. because they can't the employees potential employees cannot get to that location yes ma'am i mean we we have to be honest and realistic mm -hmm. it takes a change in culture and mindset we are not a people who are accustomed um in any numbers of, of, of any significance of, of sharing our space when traveling yes ma'am we have we built the cars we took pride in ownership mm -hmm. And we are not a people who think it, you know, we are accustomed. New Yorkers don't buy cars if they can help it. First of all, they haven't got any place to store them or, or any place to That's park right. them. That's right. Also, and, and so uh, and, and Atlanta has expanded their public transportation. Mm -hmm. So you've got to change not a mindset as well. All right. You've got to change a mindset uh, until people are exposed to it. We have a lot of folks who have never lived anywhere outside of the Detroit area. Yes, so it, it, you, you've got to change that cultural thinking. So you, you may get people who are more affluent who will begin to take public transportation once it is more um, reliable mm -hmm. um, and, and, and more easily accessible, especially when you address things as reduction in air pollution. Yes. We have a high rate of... Uh, respiratory problems in mm -hmm. this area i mean you can convince especially our young folks you know who are more adventurous um people to to take public transportation but you got to sell that concept too mm -hmm. as well as insurance judge because yeah. you know detroit plays some of the highest insurance so if michigan people, plays the highest insurance, yeah well yeah, Detroit's yeah, leading the parade. yes yes <laughs> but if you got folks that's that's taking public transportation that's going to put a dent into those insurance uh, reduce re insurance well, it certainly Cost. would help. Uh, it would certainly help in terms of folks not having to the expense of trying to buy a car. Yes, ma'am. As well as the expense of some. You can afford to buy the car. You can even afford the car note. Mm -hmm. But you can't afford the insurance. insurance. That's right. My insurance yeah. is higher than my car note. That's right. We are running out of time. Okay. And I am. I, I really, really wish we had more time because yeah. I think we have just begun this conversation. I see that there are folks who are calling in, and we, we, we didn't have a chance to really uh, communicate with those folks today. This issue is going to be ongoing, so I'm anticipating that sometime after August, we're going to get together, and we're going we're gonna to have new information, and we're yes, going to have this conversation again. I think uh, not August. I think the later part of July, and I'm like Mr. McAllister. We now have to, I won't say force the RTA, but... You know, they're going to have to come out with some definite plans if you plan on putting this thing on the ballot and also for people to understand what they're getting into. You, know, you want you, more details, more, not just the philosophy. More right. detail. That's yeah, it. and that's fair. But like that's I said, I, I want this, but um, I sound like a tape recorder. I want it, but it's got to be done right. right. I right. think we all want it. I think yeah. we all want it. Judge, I just want to put in one more plug. I want the folks out there to July 12th. Ask me, 5.30 to 7.30, fundraiser.
for our candidate for Supreme Court, Justice Deborah Thomas. Because she does a lot for little people, working people, people who maybe lives have not work right, but they're trying to get themselves together, and she's submitted information. I just wish everybody could have came down there that Saturday and asked me. Oh, we didn't hold anymore. They was all sitting on the floor even. Yeah, inf information that was being brought out that was never brought out before, and it was helpful to a lot We're of gonna people. We're going to do it again. Okay. Yeah. We're okay. going to do it again. Yeah. Judge, is a pleasure. Yeah, thank you for thank coming you. in. Thank I'm, 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 I'm going to make you come back. <laughs> and to my viewers, I want to uh, tell you that as always, I love you, Detroit. I am Judge Deborah Thomas.